live from Los Angeles. Welcome back to Good Morning, Lala. On Wealth Wednesday, we know that our health is our greatest wealth. So Dr. Laura Lyle is in the house. She's the founder of Laura Lyle Wellness Partners, and you deal with hormone therapy and stuff primarily? I, <clears throat> I deal with lots of things. Yep. So I like to think of us as 21st century medicine, uh, preventative health and wellness. I did, I do have a large focus on hormone replacement because I started in this industry back in a time when uh, most people don't realize this, but we didn't have over-the-counter products in the 80s like vitamin D and glucosamine. Wow. So I'm a compounding pharmacist, uh, 33 years, and I was out 12 years. And in that 12 years, I studied European, Canadian ways of doing bioidentical hormones back at the time when it was really considered almost witchcraft. You know, people really didn't understand it. But so I've, uh, I've had a lot of years in this industry, and then I went back to be an MD and have been doing that for the last couple of decades. So it's not just hormone replacement because it all goes together, right? Yeah. So I like to do root cause medicine. I like to get to the problem. I like to fix the problem and I like to help people get off medication. Oh, and you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's key. It really so is. So tell us, what is the primary thing? When people come in, mm -hmm. obviously, like, a lot of people probably need to cleanse. Mm -hmm. They need basic mm -hmm. vitamins. Mm -hmm. What are the primary things that people generally have going on? So most of the time, uh, you know, obviously fatigue, I think, is the, a big complaint. Mm -hmm. Not sleeping well. I think 90%, um, I swear, of America right now is not sleeping well. So... Um, when we, we do look at their blood work. We'll look at trend analysis. So I tend to be a vampire. I think um, someone said, you're like a blood whisperer, right? I like to look <laughs> at the blood work and also then do trend analysis. So I'm about not looking at a moment in time. I think where our practice is different and what we're doing is I'm a little bit like a stockbroker because I like to take numbers, put them into a spreadsheet, and I like to get predictive value on trends and then predict what we need. So how do we know if vitamin D is working? How do we know if you're, you need fish oil? Right. The only way to know is to get that objective data. You so. may be related to our executive producer. Yeah. Yeah. You know that. He's a numbers guy. Is he a numbers yes. guy? You'd be amazed. I find it very interesting when you said most of America is not sleeping well. Yes. I am one of those statistics. Yes. I don't remember the last time I slept through the night. Correct. I hear this day in and day out. If they're, and it's, it's over the last decade, it's becoming more of a problem. I do think we're all on social media up at night. We're um, getting a lot of blue light and ambient light. And so, you know, one of the things that we tell patients, obviously we all know we should be turning them off, but we aren't all willing to do that. Um, but there's like a set of, of goggles you can wear. I don't know if you've heard of True Dark. It's a pretty interesting concept, but they're actually red glass. They're glasses that block the blue light and you wear them about 30 minutes before you go to bed. Oh. It's pretty cool. Now that's <laughs> sexy. It, no, let me tell you, it's not sexy. I was gonna say, <laughs> you look a little like Bon Jovi when you're, you know, oh yeah, it's not for the sexy look. But mm -hmm. one of the things it can do is stimulate melatonin, your own melatonin, so that you can go to sleep easier. Wow. Yeah. So can you just take melatonin? Is it bad? You can. Actually, melatonin is very good. Um, you know, there's studies working in the dementia arena. You know, it is. But some people get very groggy from yeah, melatonin. Sure. So mm -hmm. you kind of have to find that right dose and what works. So on the flip side, though, mm -hmm. we can't sleep, but we're trying to stay awake all day because exactly. so many of us are trying to build our businesses or our brands. So... How do we balance that? Well, I think the most important thing is we have to do, I love your philosophy and asking everyone what they do in the morning because truly we all have to start carving out 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the afternoon, clearing the clutter because in doing so, we can accomplish a lot more, right? If we're, we can control our stress. Mm -hmm. And so part of the things I believe we have to do is not only eat clean, which I think we all know. We're in LA. A lot of people eat very clean here. <laughs> so it's a good thing. Um, exercise moderate. I wouldn't say over exercise, but also um, making sure everything's balanced. And, you know, one of the things um, in women's health, for example, low progesterone makes you very tired. So, or, you know, not able to sleep at night. So it'll make you tired during the day. So, you know, you have to have, know your number. So what do you do? Because I think probably for me, I'm probably getting lower progesterone. Mm -hmm. What do, can I do something just eating more something or do I have to take? I recommend taking exactly what your body needs. And so that can be mixed into the exact formula for you. Because remember, all of us are different. And so looking at the numbers, mm -hmm. having it written in a formula, and that's, you know, where we come in and you know, help to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder too, I uh, talked to a lot of guys and, uh, you know, they struggle, women too, with testosterone, mm -hmm. right? Definitely. So what's the cause of that? Is that mostly stress? Is that diet? Is it all of it, all of the above and more? 
So it is a combination. You know, it's interesting. I'll see young people with low testosterone. A lot of times they're sedentary. Uh, maybe they, they're putting on a little extra weight. They don't have the healthiest habits. Um, but, you know, in men, it, it declines j gradually over time. In women, we fall off a cliff. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting when we're in what we call our second prime, like in our 50s, we're supposed to be confident and, you know, we know what we want in life and we're, we're go getters. And, um, and then all of a sudden, the hormones drop. So, you know, in men, it's more gradual. But replacing testosterone, um, there's a lot of different modalities to do that, but it's critically important in men's health too. So for mm -hmm. men who are experiencing something like that, what are some of the symptoms mm -hmm. that reflect the dropping of testosterone? So interesting, um, younger men oftentimes um, don't come, if people think it's sex drive. Like every male will create sex drive with testosterone, but actually um, achy joints sometimes, they'll have weight gain, um, they'll have insomnia, and we're hearing a recurring theme here, insomnia, 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 women's health, men's health, uh, when hormones aren't balanced. And because if you think about it, um, it's key to having your energy during the day. And if you're tired and sluggish, you're not gonna be sleeping well at night. Mm -hmm. What initially sparked your interest in this field? You know, believe it or not, my mother, um, uh, she's 84. She's the longest standing patient I've cared for. Uh -huh. And um, I came out as a young pharmacist in the 80s and she was getting put on a script for Permarin. And at the time I had heard it wasn't going to be a good idea to take synthetic hormones. And so I researched and found a better way because my grandmother died before I was born of, of bilateral breast cancer. So that was where I started, and, I, and, and that was 30-some years ago. And, you know, it's been fun to watch the industry go from maybe 40 or 50 of us in the country um, working in that industry of compounded hormones to now, you know, thousands of doctors attending meetings to learn. Has that surprised you, or did you expect that a lot? You know, I always believed that it would become mainstream over time. But sometimes when you're bucking a system, uh, you know, you just have to be, when you know, and you're set on your convictions, I always believed it was the right way, and now we've come full circle. Uh, you know, they actually have just overturned the whole 2002 Women's Health Initiative, and estrogen actually is now not touted to cause breast cancer. These are huge findings. Right. Huge. Well, thank you so much mm -hmm. for sharing yes. your wealth of knowledge, Dr. Mm -hmm. Laura. Please tell everyone where they can find and follow you. So um, our website, www.lylewellness.com, and they can, uh, that's the easiest way. And Follow us that way. Thank you Thank so you. much. You're welcome. Thank you so much.